we've got some parts here that we've got to reproduce we got we got to make some extras of we got to copy them and uh, some make, make some more pieces here and this is going to be probably a series of videos it'll probably be at least two three videos if i had to guess because we're going to have to build this piece right here they want another one built just like this they want a duplicate of this and then we've got to build four of these and then they want four of these right here I believe these are like hold downs. I, that's what I call them, hold downs that kind of go like this around this flange. But these hold downs are two different sizes. They're, they're completely different in size and shape. So we've got a total of eight of these and we've got to make one of these right there. Today's video, we're gonna start with these guys right there. I wanna go ahead and get started on this stuff. So this is where we're gonna begin, but I'll go ahead and and give you the overview of what we're doing right here. And I've got a piece of stainless steel flat bar right here. I didn't have the right size here in the shop, so this is a piece that I ordered from McMaster Car to uh, make up these guys right here. All right. Also, I tried to find some of this material in town and uh, nobody had what I needed. So for this guy right here, this is, this is for an exhaust system, by the way. Um, I know it goes to a, an engine and this is for some kind of turbo turbo system and it is stainless steel so we're building this out of stainless steel and this size tubing right here I cannot find in town you know I checked with a couple of the shops nobody had it so again I went to McMaster car and they had what I needed right there five inch OD the inside is four and five eight, so that's gonna allow me to machine the ID out just a little bit to what I need. So we've got that. And as far as these flans goes, I used my uh, local welding shop to uh, help me do some burning. Now they supplied this half inch thick stainless steel. They had this and they, they burned this out. So this, this'll be for this ring right here. That's gonna go on that side. And they did not have the plate that I needed for this guy, for this flange right here. Now this one was fabricated. They had little ears and you can see where they were welded on. But what I had wanted to do was just plasma cut this shape out of a piece of stainless. And they didn't have the piece of stainless down there. So, and I needed three quarter thick. So I just went ahead and uh, bought a piece of three quarter thick stainless for this job right there and then had them cut it out. So this is, they, uh, they drew it up and cut it out for me and it looks pretty good and I've got some extra material here that I can use uh, later on we'll save that put it on the shelf so we've got a lot of machining got a lot of work to do on this piece right here and uh, we've got to get to it and we got to get all this stuff done so we'll go ahead and I, as I said we're gonna go ahead and start with these guys right here and you know this is the kind of stuff i know a lot of you cnc guys could probably whip these things up really quick and easy uh, but i have the manual machine so i got to be creative in how i do these things so there's all kind of uh, creative ways you can machine this using manual machines and, and uh, old school cutters so i want to uh, use the knt mill for some of this so let's uh let's come up with some fun ways to use the mill and and mill these things out. We've got a radius here that we've got to put in there as well. So let's go ahead and get to it. I wanted to give a mention to the uh, MK Morse Company. This is the bandsaw blade that they give me. I've been running for a while and it's been working great. So uh, thanks again, MK Morse. It's uh, good quality stuff. So, you know, if you're in a market for bandsaw blades, uh, be sure to check them out. Good stuff. That's all eight of the blocks and that stainless steel and the blade's doing great. All right, we're gonna start getting this guy right here, the blocks for this one milled to size. So I've already started on this one right here, just making sure that my setup was good. And we're just gonna take one of these, and this is inch and a half. This way, we're gonna bring it down to one inch, all right? I'm just gonna do one at a time. It's just four of them. Now, you could very well stack more than one in there like this and do that, 
The problem I've had with uh, doing jobs like that before, even though this was the same material, I've had issues where it wants to clamp one piece, but the other piece it starts kicking back as it's milling and it starts pushing off. So just to eliminate that, that issue in case it happens, I'm just gonna do one at a time for now. It won't take that long. So we'll mill one side, then we'll flip it over and we'll mill the other, okay? From that first block that I had, I already had the DRO set to a zero to get to my depth at exactly one inch. So I'm just bringing it back up to zero there. And we'll pull it out of there and mic it. Should be the same. One thousandths over one inch. So we're good to go. So we've got these four milled to the, the, the proper width there. We've still got plenty to do on those, but since the face mill is uh, set up, I wanna go ahead and get these four here milled as well. So the width on these are gonna be inch and one eighth. We're just gonna make them 1.125. These appeared to be some kind of like a cast, I don't know, maybe like they were cast. So we're gonna make them inch and one eighth and that's a 9 16 radius right there. So that'll be important when we use our, we're gonna use a radius tool, a corner rounding mill to make this radius right there. So we'll just mill these down to uh, inch and one eight using the same method that we did right there. And then we'll, after we do that, we'll move back over to these and continue on and start getting our radius milled on uh, this side right here. I just want to square the ends of the blocks up now. You can see I've got one of them done. This is this here is going to finish at uh, one and five sixteenths. I just finished this one at like one point three ten. It's not that critical on that. We're going to be cutting one end again. So I've got three left of there. We got our little production set up. We got our parallels in there. I've got a stop set up. So we're ready to go. We'll cut one side. I'll file that one, and then I'll I'll move the table back to zero 
flip it over and then cut the other side. It'll make it go pretty quick. We stick that in there on our parallels. Push it up against our little stop there. All right, we'll get to use our power feed right here. Feeding nine and a half inches a minute. All right, by the way, that is a one inch carbide four fluid end mill I'm using. All right, there's our, there's one side cut right there. We got all of our blocks filed on that side so we don't have any burrs hanging out up on us. We got that one last area there that we need to mill. So we're just gonna slide it in. I've already moved the table over our 10 thousandths that we need. And we'll just make our cleanup cut there. We just finished these four right here doing the side milling that's for that guy right there so I'm gonna repeat this and do the same thing for uh, these four blocks we're gonna be milling this one so it's inch and a half that's what I'll be doing is just making making these inch and a half I believe I cut them one eighth long so yeah one and one and five eighths is what I cut them so just going to do the same thing. No need to keep showing the same operation, but you get the idea. We'll, we'll uh, trim these up, and then we're going to move on to some um, corner rounding. So we've got our blocks milled to the right width and length now. And by the way, the thickness is correct. These are three quarter inches thick. So we're good there. But what we need to do now is make this little milled section right in there. And this has got a radius machined in there, both here and here. So I was trying to come up with a creative way that we could do this. And I believe the way that this was probably machined would have been turned like in a lathe. But I think the way that I would like to do it is to use the milling machine and actually use a cutter to mill this. So I was doing some measuring to try to figure out what the radius is on this. You know, it's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty big radius just by looking at that little section right there. And by the way, I was going to show you. So here's the flange. I believe these work something like this. So I think it's going to, I think this is going to be pulled up something like that. So you can see where the radius is kind of wrapping around this OD right there. And I believe this is seven inch total. I'm sorry, not seven inch, three and a half inch radius is what that's going to be. What I want to do is take this big milling cutter right here. This is a seven inch milling cutter and we'll center up on this. We'll put this in the vise. And we'll center up on the, the cutter and we'll come in there like that. We'll cut the bottom to, to cut the radius right there. And then we'll come up and we'll mill that step in it. And then that will, that will produce 
that three and a half inch radius in there like it needs to be and we'll just use that use that cutter that's what we're going to try anyway I'll, I'll get one done and make sure that, that my setup is going to work and to hold this cutter we'll use this nice pretty milling arbor right here this is one that I had bought back when I was stocking up on tooling for the K&T mill this is a Polish made 50 taper stub arbor it's never been used matter of fact I just had to spend a little time getting all the spacers off of it everything was just stuck to it ever since I got it all the cosmoline everything was froze up on it so I had to kind of uh, lube everything down and get everything pulled off and clean it up and it'll be the first time that we ever use this thing so we'll put this cutter on here and we'll side cut it come in there like so and side cut it so let's go give it a shot all right, we got our setup ready to go. So here's the first one. I always like to do the first one and make sure we, we got it right. Make sure I get all my setups uh, properly tuned up. So we'll go ahead and we'll stick our block in here. We're using my stop. We're just gonna push the block right up against the stop there and tighten the vise up good and, good and firm. So we're gonna do this in two steps. I've got a zero on the Z axis set so that we're gonna come in and plunge and cut this step right there. And then once we cut this, we'll back out and we'll move, we'll move the knee up so that our piece is just right there in the center of the cutter. And then once we come into our zero, our zero is gonna to touch the end of the block. And then we're gonna move in exactly 30 thousandths and 30 thousandths just about cleans it up from side to side there. That's all we're looking for is just a nice radius from side to side. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to use our Noga Mini Cool to uh, keep things nice and cool and lubricated while we're cutting. So we want to run a pretty low speed on this, just being stainless steel and a high-speed cutter there. So what we're, what we're at, that's a 7-inch diameter cutter, right? We'll figure out what our surface speed on the outer diameter. So we'll go 0.262 times 7. That's the diameter of the cutter. Now we're going to times that by the RPM. So we're running 37 RPM on the on the machine here. So we're we'll call that 68 surface feet per minute. So that's pretty good for for where we're at on that stainless steel. Part of that unevenness is the cutter itself not being ground uh, absolutely concentric with the center. I know that my arbor is running nice and true. I've already checked that. I did try a little faster feed on the first one while I was doing this cut and it was it was a little bit more hammering there on the cut, so I just backed it back off to a quarter inch. All right, we're gonna back off and just kind of touch it into our final depth. All right, there's our first cut. So I've got to unlock the knee and then raise the, the, the knee up. All right, I'm just going to hand feed it in. I'm watching my DRO. I'm going to go in 30 thousandths once we hit our zero. There we go. That cutter's doing a good job on that. It looks nice and pretty. A little bit of filing we got to do. All right, two down and two to go. This right here will give you a good idea of how it matches up. See, it looks real good on that ring right there, that, that radius.
I believe the next phase we're going to go ahead and work on now is these two corner radius cuts there. So what we'll do is use a, a corner rounding end mill. We'll use this guy right there. And, uh, this one right there, I believe this was given to me by, by Eric Hoffmeyer. I believe this was, I wrote his name on that back whenever he gave that to me. So this is a half inch uh, radius. So if you look at my radius gauge right here, this is one of my Lufkin radius gauges. It fits that very, very close. This is uh, more of a sanded finished radius. So we're just going to, we're going to make it half inch radius. All right. So we'll set this back up in the mill vise and we'll do one at a, one at a time, one, one set at a time. And what we'll do is we'll set it up and we'll cut it. We'll go across there. We'll cut one corner. We'll flip the block around and cut the other corner. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and set it in here and make a cut and show you what it's like. We're going to cut one side. We'll flip it around and cut the other. I love doing this stuff on the KNT because it's got so much rigidity to it. It's not like cutting on a regular knee mill. Now we got a full cut going. Full radius. There we go. There's one side cut. So we'll just flip it around. Notice I got my parallels in there. I'm going to flip it around, make sure it's pushed against the stop there. And we're going to repeat. All right, there's all of our radius cuts. I think they're turning out pretty good. They're looking pretty nice. So our next step, we'll go ahead and put our, this is a half inch hole. So we'll go ahead and drill our hole in there, get that done. And then once that, once that hole in there is in there, the, the last step is gonna be putting this bevel on that side. And I'm still working on how I want to machine that. I haven't decided there's different ways I could do this. And I'm probably gonna put this off until later till I figure out how exactly I want to machine that in there. But we're gonna go ahead and do our hole and finish that out. And then uh, after that, we're gonna start moving on to the other ones and, and get those knocked out. See, I'm not running it too fast. We're actually at 325 RPM. The Noga Cool is going to do a good job of keeping the cutter and the workpiece nice and cool. Keep the edge from trying to get too dull and burning up. Split point drills do really good in stainless steel. A good material to, to be using those in. Go ahead and chamfer this side while it's here. Just wanting to break that edge, just like that.
All right, and you see we we're using my little production setup just like we were over over in the K and T. We've got our stop set up. We got our parallels, our uh, parallel separators. So we'll come back later, and, and uh, I'll see about deburring those because that's going to mess me up on where our center distance is. Just make sure that those parallels are clean right there where we're going to set our workpiece. And just come up and touch our parallel, and it should repeat really good. I love this stop right here. You clamp there to the uh, top of the, the vice jaw. Shouldn't need any kind of center there. You come down and just very lightly just let it start itself. Now another thing uh, to remember whenever you're drilling stainless steel is don't let the drill rub the hole. Don't let it dwell in the hole because that's how you dull your drill bits. Always be cutting. So I've reset my, my setup here so that we could chamfer the, the top side of the clamp. All I did was just change out my parallels so that we could drop this down and allow this area of the, uh, the hole down to touch my stop in the same spot, you know, because we were flipped over this way coming up. So now, you set it down in there, slide it over till it touches. Clamp it lightly. And just lightly chamfer it. We're really just breaking the edge off. Makes it look nice. All right, I decided I want to go ahead and finish these out. Let's, let's get these done so that we can move on to the next part there. So machining this bevel right there. I believe these were originally cut maybe on a lathe just because of the way the tool marks are made in there. But I think I've decided the way that I want to do it. I, I was considering doing this on a lathe. But so let's take this criterion boring head right here. This is a four inch head. So this is a, a four inch diameter there and about. And we've got a one inch bar that fits in here like so. And we can put that in there. And we can take a 3 8 tool bit and put it in there like that. And then we can set this, I uh, dropped my scale somewhere. We can set this tool bit accordingly, you know, to the length that we need. Somewhere like that. Put the proper grind on it, which actually the grind is very, very close where it needs to be right there. We'll have these in the vise and come in there and just cut it just like that. We'll just single point it, you know, just be like a fly cutter and just come in there and cut that, cut that bevel on there. And I think that'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is going to be our setup. Hopefully, we'll work pretty good for our cutting our chamfer there. And I've got it all centered up. I, I centered the block before I set this up, just so you know. Put an edge finder in there, find the center, and then put the bar in there, uh, the boring head in there. All right, so we know this is four inches, and that's going to give us uh, a remainder of three inches that we need for our seven inch total circle. So that'd be an inch and a half per side. So all I've done is just kind of visually scaled this, this tool bit from the edge of the, the board head out there to the, to the tip of the tool, about one and a half inches. So that should put us on the correct radius that we're looking for. And I've been sneaking up on it and I'm touching all the way around on this uh, top edge right there. All right, I just brought it in and once it touched off, it cut all the way across there. So I think that's going to be pretty good. So we're just going to feed in from right there. And all I'll do is just as we're cutting it, I'll just measure across the face of that cut and make it about a quarter inch wide just to kind of match this block right here. It's approximately a quarter inch right there, maybe about five sixteenths. It's not consistent. So we're just going to kind of split the difference. 
maybe make it a quarter, maybe five sixteenths, somewhere in there. It's just good. It's just to provide a little clearance, I believe. Right, let's go for it. See what it does. Right now I'm hand feeding it in there, but we're gonna let's try our power feed and see what it does. leave the depth where we got it right there I was starting to get a little bit of chatter so I don't want to I don't want to mess up the finish by trying to go a little bit deeper with that chatter in there so we're gonna stop our cuts right there and we're gonna leave it just like that so I'm gonna slow it down too we're gonna run our lowest speed which is uh, 25 rpm on the machine I went over and modified my tool, gave it a little bit of a back rake angle. I'm going to hone it real good too. I'm going to see if this will help uh, reduce some of that chatter on that cut there and make a little bit better finish. If this works better, I can put the other two on there and uh, hopefully just kind of scrape that surface in and make it a little bit more smooth. So we'll give this a shot here. Pretty good. So let me fill you in on one of my little tricks I'm doing right here. I have been what I'm calling hand scraping this in, turning the machine off, and doing this by hand at a controlled rate. And it's working pretty good. Now it's not going to completely eliminate what looks like chatter in the, in the surface, but it's definitely better than what it was. Moving the table about a half a thousandths. And it's really wiping that surface clean. That looks that actually looks really good right there. Let me pull that out. This is one of the ones that I already did. And that's that's a lot better than it was when I pulled it out earlier. He said it you can still see chatter right there, but it feels very smooth to the touch. So just doing it by hand at a controlled at a controlled pace, trying to dampen the whole thing with my hand and just hand scraping it in. Alright guys, I think we're finished up with uh, these these four hold downs right there. And I'm happy with the way they turned out. I did a little bit of filing there with a mill smooth just to kind of slick out that radius. We did that on all all four of them there. Did some deburring around all the edges so that we don't have any uh, sharp, pointy corners. And as I had said, you know, this bevel that we cut in there, depends on how you look at it. It looks like it's real chattery, 
but it's actually very smooth. So there is a little bit of imperfection to the, to the surface finish there, but just, uh, you know, that's the way that we ended up cutting it. And that's the finish that we got there, that wide cut. With, so that's what we ended up with. It's going to, it's going to work out. It's going to work out good. So there's the original and here's a replacement. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, that's going to finish up those four right there. And we're going to go ahead and move on and uh, finish out. We got these four right here that we've got to work on next. So this is going to be in the next video here, okay?